I start this topic of calculus stories for the enthusiast. This term uh, enthusiast actually means mathematics enthusiast. I've never heard of this term. I had heard about bike enthusiast and car enthusiast and I'm a train enthusiast. And also there is movie enthusiast and whatnot, many, many things. But I have never heard about math enthusiast when one subscriber Rohit told me that he was a math enthusiast. So now I accept the term and it is for these uh, people who has a deep liking for mathematics but doesn't want to go too much into the technical details as to but still wants to have an overall idea what what is going on. Keeping in view their requirements, this calculus stories for the enthusiasts is started. And uh, every talk would be of around 15 minutes, not more than that. So let us start with what is calculus. Calculus is the study of change or the rate of change. For example, how much distance an object or car has traveled, that is you study change, the distance travel, and at what speed it was moving was the rate of change, which or the velocity, that is, that is called the rate of change. And it is also study of infinite processes because at the heart of calculus lies infinite processes. We will very soon see that, but uh, it might not be so easily apparent, but you will soon understand what I mean by this. Uh, there is a very famous saying by Benoit Mandelbrot, the father of fractal geometry, that you will understand calculus much better if you know at the very outset that every continuous function need not have a derivative. We will have an example as we go on because it will have a little bit of technicalities. I am sure math enthusiasts would be happy to go with those technicalities. So who are the pioneers of calculus? One of them is Archimedes, of course. If you look at the book of Apostles, volume 1 and volume 2, he starts with integration and ends with differentiation in the sense that integration, the idea behind idea on which the idea of in notion of integration is based is exactly the way Archimedes calculated the area of the circle. So in that way Archimedes discovered integral calculus and later on Newton discovered, Newton and Leibniz discovered differential calculus. So among the big pioneers of our calculus is Archimedes from Greece, Madhava from India, from the Kerala school of mathematics who discovered infinite series and he knew about the Gregory series of tan inverse x and it is now called the Madhava Gregory series. By the way, it's not that as, as an Indian I am forcing some Indian name here. This is a well known fact now and in fact many western writers including Ian Stewart from whose book I have taken some information he, which I place here uh, actually considers Madhava as one of the greatest of all time, greatest mathematicians of all times. Then of course Newton his, his name hasn't, it, it need not be repeated every time and Leibniz whom you do not know very much about but you use his symbols dy dx when you do integrate when you do differentiation you use his integral sign and do the do integration but you don't know much about this quite german philosopher so what did archimedes do how did he find the area of a circle euclidean geometry is the key to everything this is the foundation of all modern mathematics that is the way i view it Look at what I what Archimedes did. He took several points on the circle and then joined those points and joined the end points say of P1 and P2 to O to the center of the circle. So making so many suppose here I have uh, around 8 points so there are 8 triangles. So I would calculate the area of these 8 triangles and hence get the area of the polygon. So a huge part of the area of the circle is covered. The more points I put on the circumference, I cover more area of the more of the area. So if I keep on noting down the area, as I put more and more points, I amazingly go towards the actual area of the circle. So an infinite limiting process, the idea of sequence, the idea of essentially integration to find a integration as an area is all hidden in this very intuitive and simple geometric construction which Archimedes had did. That is why Archimedes 
is absolutely the greatest genius of ancient Greece. So he is used 96 points and he with that he estimated the value of pi. We will soon learn how to estimate the value of pi. We are very comfortable using pi is equal to 22 by 7 and that's the way we do it in, in our regular classroom. So now which is bigger pi or 22 by 7? That's the question is interesting. The integral an integral shows us the path and look at the integral 0 to 1 x4 1 minus x4 divided by 1 plus x squared dx. So when x equal to 1 or x equal to 0 the integral is 0 or else it is positive. So the area under the curve is positive. So it can be figured out and it can be shown that this integral has a beautiful beautiful answer 22 pi 7 minus pi and because I know the integral is positive you can immediately conclude that 22 by 7 is strictly bigger than pi. This is called the Dalzell's integral which was published in 1944 in the journal of the London Mathematical Society but poor Dalzell doesn't is not known not so much in the mathematical circle but he did a very great thing actually and it is really fun thing and I came to know its detail from a book of Jan Stewart and then from a book which I will recommend to all of you just for you to have fun Inter Inside Interesting Integrals by Paul J. Nahin. and then so how would I do this basically I have to open up x4 into 1 minus x4 I opened it up and then I do the division you might say okay okay you might have copied it from somewhere you no, no, I really did the division, my friends, just like your school kid. I did the division and that is the quotient and that is the remainder. So, dividend is equal to divisor into quotient plus remainder, Euclid's algorithm. So, now Dalzell's integrals, when you do, when you divide by 1 plus x4, this is what the integration becomes. There will be a dx here. You can forgive me for that. I, I am a little bit of not so cautious. So when you calculate the integral, once it is written in this form, I need not tell you where the pi comes from. Because here you will have 0 to 1 integral, 1 by x squared dx, which will be tan inverse x. When you tan inverse 1 minus tan inverse 0, tan inverse 1 is pi by 4, just 4, 4 cancels and you get a pi. And remaining part gives you 22 by 7. So that's it. But is, is this what Dalzell's integral just does? No, it does something more. And by telling what it does, how it beautifully estimates pi, I will end today's talk. Look at it. This part is less than or equal to this part, this function. Obviously, because 1 plus x squared is lying between 1 and 2 as x varies between 0 and 1. So, then what happens is the following that even though the at some at the end points these function values have have same values say at, uh, at x equal to 1 this and this function value would be same because it will become 0 on the top right but overall the function this functional value is bigger than this functional value so the area under them is strictly bigger and here you can understand the same thing because 1 plus x square is bigger than 1 so 1 by 1 plus x square is strictly less than 1. If you evaluate this integral, I need not tell you how to evaluate this integral, you will get 1 by 1 to 6 0 and this you already know is 22 by 7 minus pi and this is 1 by 6 3 0 and this is how pi is evaluated. This is a very beautiful answer, very beautiful estimate of pi. You can figure it out what it would be. It will be 3.14 something, it will be 3.15 something. So pi is strictly between these two kind of rational numbers because these numbers are rational. So you are tightly bound uh, binding pi within two rational numbers, but the answer comes by using integration. Isn't that beautiful? Isn't show? Isn't that shows how powerful calculus is? So with this, I would like to end today's talk. We will come back to the story of Madhava in the next talk.